where did the spirit of fear come from? It came from the enemy himself. The scripture says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy you. He wants to take your gift and use it for his power. But everything that goes to the earth has to go back to the earth, amen? That's why we take our gifts and we give it to God. But see, the scripture goes on and says, he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us the, the power. He gave us love and he gave us self-discipline. text for some, I'm sure, 2 Timothy verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 8, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 8, verse 3 says, I thank God whom I serve for, from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remember, remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it is in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hands. Verse 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. God, we thank you for your word. God, you've already spoken many times on today. God, we pray for a revelatory word on this morning from this pulpit. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, God, that you give us the strength to hear from you just a little bit more, oh God. God, and I pray that every single void, every single need shall be met in this final moment, O oh Lord. If there's any need that anyone has left, O oh God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that it shall be fulfilled. And we ask for these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. The title of today's message is called Gift. Gift. Some people, if you want to say the gift, a gift, for a gift, something to be given, amen? But before we get into the scriptures, let's give you some context of Timothy and, and Titus. The books of 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus are known as the pastoral epistles because they contain instructions to help leaders regulate the church. In these epistles, Paul described the qualifications of bishops who are supposed to be examples of the practical gospel living. Amen? In 1 Timothy, in Timothy 1, Paul speaks on the appropriate conduct in worship gatherings, the qualifications of the elders and the deacons, and the proper order for discipline inside of the church. Paul gave us true order in the church today. In Titus, Paul instructed Titus and the Christians of Crete to behave with self-awareness, transparency, and to speak and act in accordance to their Christian values and their relationship with God, and that they should influence and feel that they reflect similar beliefs and goals of their leaders. We should be reflections of our leadership, amen? Amen. And in this chapter, Paul offers a personal challenge to my dear friend, my brother that I identify the most with in the scriptures, 
Timothy to keep following Jesus no matter the sacrifice and no matter the risk. The letter also reminds Timothy to maintain faith and hope in Jesus Christ's resurrection and raise up faithful leaders who will teach the good news of Jesus Christ. Paul lets it be known that this walk is not easy. This Christian walk is not easy. In verse 3, Timothy, I thank God for you, Paul says. The God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted, and I will be filled with joy when I see you again. At this point in scripture, this is Paul's second time writing to Timothy. And yet again, he's in trouble with the law, Brother Alex. Scripture doesn't detail exactly where or what was going on and what Paul was going through. But what we do know is he was possibly on house arrest, as mentioned in Acts 28. Or he had just been released from his imprisonment and had another long season of ministry and was arrested again in Troas. After way, either way, Paul, Paul let Timothy know he was in the middle of his trial and it was not going well. He knew that his time to leave the earth was coming. Paul was in a very dark place. And in this dark place, he finds joy in seeing his young leader, Timothy. The greatest joy for any leader is to see their followers go beyond their own personal expectations. For Paul, his joy wasn't found in the way that Timothy worshipped God on Sunday morning. For Paul, it wasn't the way that, that Timothy dressed on Sunday morning. It wasn't about just his perseverance that he faced against adversity. But ultimately, his joy was found when he saw Timothy preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what bought Paul joy. Verse 5 says, I remember your genuine faith. For you share the faith that first filled your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I know the same faith continues strong in you. This is the point that I wanted to get us to today. This is why I remind you to fan the flames. The spiritual gift God gave and I laid hands on you. Gift. Gift. What is a gift? The dictionary says a, a gift is a thing given willingly to someone without payment. But we all know there are certain contingencies when we receive gifts, amen? Uh -huh. I think one of the biggest contingencies that we must have, we must be thankful. Yeah, that's it. We have to be thankful for our gifts. Yeah. Part of being thankful means that you take care of the gift that someone gives you. Another part of being thankful is that you actually use the gift yeah. that someone gives you. And another part is you just don't let anybody use or keep the gift that someone has given to you. I always wonder, why do we treat gifts this way? Well, for me personally, I, I want to respect the person that gave me the gift. Because if they see that I abuse the gift, they may not want to give me a gift again. It's a, it's a sign of disrespect, amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. If they see that I'm not truly thankful for the gift, they surely could come to me and say, hey, I want it back. They want to see me actually use the gift out of respect for them. We know that there are spiritual gifts, amen? There's, there's many different types of gifts. In Romans 12, verses 6 through 8 says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. If your gift is faith, then have faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is to teach, then teach. If it is to encourage, then encourage. If it is to give, then give. If it is to lead, then lead diligently. Yeah. And you must do it with mercy and do it cheerfully. Yeah. Then we also know that God gave the church gifts. Yeah. Amen. He, he gave us apostles. He gave us prophets. He gave us evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I always wonder, how do we treat our gifts? How do we treat our gifts? And I had, I, had, I had my brother bring some of my gifts. I, when I was growing up, I was telling Pastor Matisha, if anybody knows me, my favorite movie 
young people, I want y'all to listen. My favorite childhood movie is Toy Story. I love Toy Story. <laughs> it was something about I could identify with Andy and him taking care of the toys. And then my favorite toy, my favorite character was Woody. All right? Woody was the leader of the pack. You know, he, he sit there be telling everybody where to go, and then he just dropped down. It was just something so funny about it, man. And when I was younger, Pastor James, this is why we have to be careful with how we treat our gifts. When I was younger, I loved Woody. I couldn't be seen without Woody, right? I wrote my name on the bottom of it like Andy did. I wrote, I wrote Rod up there, right? But the thing is, when I had the gift, I was biting Woody's nose off. I done pulled the string. You know, you pull the string and say, I got a snake in my boot, right? He went from saying, I got a snake in my boot to let me go. I was taking his boots off. I pulled the cotton out, all to the point where I had to get rid of Woody. Woody is somewhere in Wake County landfill right now. I, I saw the movie. I don't know if y'all saw the third or fourth movie where Woody and all them were in the trash. I was like, man, that's what I did. <laughs> but we have to be careful how we treat our gifts, hey, man. Well, see, I have some gifts with me today. This is Buzz. If you see... His head fell off. This was a gift given to me shortly after I tore Woody all to pieces. I got, I got buzzed and I learned how to take care of gifts. But see what happened is, there you go, beheaded like Timothy. I think Timothy got beheaded. Peter, who got beheaded? Paul, thank you. His head fell off because... I didn't package it right when I was moving. It lasted from one home to another home, but somehow when I got to that third home that I'm living in now, as my brother Steven and, and Tyree was helping me move, they said, Buzz's head done fell off. <laughs> so I got another gift. This is my first guitar that my dad gave me. Now, it looks good. It looks like I took care of it. What you don't know is I actually took it all the way apart, and I put it back together. But the thing is, when I put it back together, I can't plug it back into an amp for some reason. <laughs> but it is a gift. Then I got my last gift. I got this when I was in, uh, starting to bring tears to my eyes just looking at it. When I was in sixth grade, when I saw Brother Jakaya, I tell them all the time, they, they think I'm not into the arts. I love sports. Hey, son, you a gift too. I love sports, but I love the arts. Let me see. Can I play something? All right. Not too bad. Now, if you know anything, anybody that knows music, I was a little rusty. I haven't played this probably since 2016. Something happens when we don't use our gifts. We begin to get rusty. It doesn't feel the same. When I picked the instrument up, I wasn't sure where the exact right notes were. I wasn't sure if I should sing or play Amazing Grace or if I should just play a song that I had already had developed in myself. But regardless of all of that, the gift is almost spoiled. When I picked the instrument up out of the case, Sister Ashley looked at me and said, ew. It had a different smell. There was stuff growing out of it. Matter of fact, there's still stuff in there now. That's, that's why I didn't want to play it too long. I want to get sick. But it's, it's, it's about done. We have to be careful with our gifts. 
We don't want to spoil our gifts. We want to cultivate our gifts. Paul lets it be known in this way. We should stir our gifts. Many of us have different gifts. Some of it may be to prophesy. Some of it is to preach. Some of it is to teach. Some of it is to love. But we must stir up the gift that God has for us. And we must be aware of something, Pastor Hamilton. For verse 7 it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Where did the spirit of fear come from? It came from the enemy himself. The scripture says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy you. He wants to take your gift and use it for his power. But everything that goes to the earth has to go back to the earth. Amen. That's why we take our gifts and we give it to God. But see, the scripture goes on and says, he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us the, the power. He gave us love, and he gave us self-discipline. You can't just have one thing. You can't just have power without the love and without self-discipline. You can't just have love and power without the self-discipline. You can't have self-discipline and the love without the power, amen? Because you won't have any anointing. This is our weapon. To have a sound mind and discipline. Verse 8, as I close. Where are the bags? So I never, so never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me. Even though I'm in prison. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer me for the sake of the good news. See, the enemy has a second weapon. And his second weapon is shame. He wants to guilt trip you into not believing in Christ. Well, we have to understand in the context of the scripture what Paul is saying to Timothy is, I know what they're saying about me. At this point, Paul has been locked up for the umpteenth time. He's been on house arrest. He's been judged. He's been convicted by the state over and over and over again. And let me bring it to today. I visited a church last Sunday for Mother's Day. And before the preacher began to speak, he let it be known, Pastor, that he's actually classified as a radical Christian that is against the country of the United States. And I've listened to this pastor for years since I've been born. It's a local church right here in Raleigh. And every single thing that he preaches and teaches is the same stuff that I preach every day. It's the same stuff that Pastor Hamilton and Pastor James and Matista teach and preach to us. And I said, if he's an enemy of the United States, to the United States, then surely we are enemies as well. What the country, the culture of the United States is doing to us right now is letting us know that being a Christian is an enemy. It's going to come a time where you are going to want to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's going to be a time where truth is now considered a lie. And the lie is considered the truth. We're looking at society. Everything is backwards. They're, they're telling our daughters that they should be sons. And they're telling our sons that they should be daughters. They're allowing their children to come to school and call themselves whatever name they want to be called. But I'm here to tell you today that you are a child of God. You are a mighty young man of valor. You are a mighty Proverbs 31 woman. You are created fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't care what the enemy has to say. I know, I know the truth. I'm only 31 years old, and a lot of the older saints, they're starting to age out a little bit. And I know, I already know, I talk to Pastor, I talk to Pastor Ashley all the time about it. Do you know I might have to face trial one day for the gospel of Jesus Christ? This is what Paul faced. Locked in chains, in prison. He was hated on. And people began to be ashamed of it. 
But I'm here to tell you just like 116, Romans 116 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as we close, we all have different gifts. Young people, I want y'all to watch. This was for y'all. We've got three different gifts. Where should I start? One of y'all asked me. The smallest one? It's small, right? I call this the Apostle Wilkerson. It looks small, but it's got some fire inside of it. Just because your gift may seem small to the world, you've got to know that you've got the power and the fire of Jesus Christ in you. Where are we going next? The big one? The middle one. Look at this one. Now, this one looks childish, right? Stepdad shark or baby shark, some type of shark with a birthday cake and it's nice and shiny. What's in here? I feel like it's Christmas, my birthday. Your child is drenched in oil. My child is anointed. They may look like they're just hollering while you're preaching. They got one shoe on and one shoe off. They may not be doing what you think they're doing, but remember the oil that you put on them, amen? And I'm going to close. I guess we only got one more. Now, this is the biggest one. This is what Pastor Letitia looked like before she got saved. What's inside of here, Pastor? We're going to close. I'm going to let y'all go. I know y'all ready for some chicken. I'm tired. I probably should have used somebody else. Everything. Got an energy drink. Well, it's, it's empty. That's trash, by the way. That's also some more trash. Get to the bottom. Just, just grab as much as you can. I'm going to help y'all clean the church after. But it's in pieces. Mm. It's in pieces. That's it. Pretty much. Yeah. If you realize this, it's a bunch of stuff that has been packed into a big gift. It's been shredded. It's been broken. It's been stretched. People have thrown it away. People have counted it out and said that it was no good, that it wasn't worth anything. The God that I serve, he takes all of those pieces. He looks over your life. He he brought you out of things that people cannot see. He saw your brother. He saw you. He sent your brother. He sent your sister to your front doorstep when you didn't want to sing. And then he brought you before the church to to sing. You knew the calling on your life of all of these pieces. Your mother died. Your your father wasn't there for you. And you looked for something, but you said, this isn't the life for me. This isn't cool enough. This isn't what I want to be. The energy that I'm supposed to have is completely empty. The enemy has drained me dry of everything that I thought that I had. But what God does, he takes all of those pieces. He, he, he says, you are a singer. He says, okay, I'm going to remove you from this place and plant you at another place. And when you begin to be planted, you shall be planted by the rivers of water where you shall find all your strength, all of your nutrients, all of your love. You shall be loved. You are a woman of God. You are a man of God. God is going to take every single last one of those pieces in your life right now. Hallelujah. He's going to put it together for your gift. Why don't you stir up the gift of God that is inside of you? I don't care what the enemy has to say. I know that we're toward the end of the service and it's been long. But why don't you stand up and give God some praise inside of this place for all of the broken pieces that the enemy left you. God is going to take those broken pieces and He's going to use your gift, amen.
Hallelujah. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed, Jakaya. See, the enemy, what the enemy wants to do is he wants to steal your joy. Paul knew in that very moment, if I can just see that one, hallelujah. If I could see the one that is still carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ beyond any circumstance. I know I'm about to be headed, about to be headed. But if there's just one that will carry on the gospel of Jesus Christ after I live, heaven will shout glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to close. As we were putting this message together, Sister Ashley, she, she helped me with the examples and things. And I was trying to figure out, I was like, how do I connect my life with this? There's so much of my story that I haven't told you, young people. I know y'all heard the, the parts that I'm not ashamed to tell. When I grew up, I, I grew up in church. Everybody knows that part. I grew up kind of knowing the Lord. But I strayed away. There were broken pieces in my life that not even my family knows about. Only my wife knows. The enemy used me. He abused me. And I felt like God had neglected me when I was in the middle of that situation. And I put on this face like I'm all perfect, I'm all manly, I'm all good. But in reality, inside, I was broken. Many of you young men and young women are in that same situation right now. The enemy has lied to you. God has not left you alone. I believe in Isaiah it says, will they be aware that you are here, God? So that is my prayer for you on today. It's not that you would ask God to come. God, come. I need you right now, God. I pray that you will become aware of his presence in your life. The fact that you made it here on today, let alone knows that there is a miracle work in God still living on us today, living amongst us. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Parents, in this moment, I want you to just take the next minute. And I want you to think about your unsaved child. If they're not here today, if they are here today, I want you to go to them. I want you to gather your children if you, if you need to. And I want you to pray for them. You can just take two minutes to pray for them. And those that have children that aren't here today, I want you to close your eyes and think on them right now. The portal is open. You have to see them inside of church, praise them. You have to see them inside worshiping in their living rooms or their homes. You have to see them changing the things that they watch on TV and the music that they listen to in their ears. Visualize it right now in this very moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this generation. God, we love on you first. God, we give you thanks for who you are alone is enough. God, every single person that hears your spirit right now, God, we pray that you speak to them. Speak to their hearts. Speak to their minds. Give them the strength and self-discipline. Oh, God, to see you moving right now on behalf of their child. God, and speak to the child in this very moment. Because we know that you are an omniscient God. You know exactly where they are. And God, you know exactly where they are going to go. God, we pray right now that you would give their child a vision of what you call them to be. And God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for the powers that be of our government, of our land. Oh God, that they shall make an about face, oh Lord, and submit to the word of God. God, in either way, you will still get the glory. And God, we pray for these soldiers, for these saints, oh God, that are in this house, oh Lord, that you will give our gifts 
strength, our, our parents' strength. Give our leaders strength. God, and we pray that we shall be able, wherever we come and wherever we go, oh God, we'll know that it is for your glory. Because you, oh God, gave us a gift. God, you wrapped it inside of humanity. It left glory and came down to this earth. It hung itself on a tree, O oh Lord. And it died for us. God, give us the awareness that your blood still works today. Lord, and we ask for all of these things in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen.